Welcome to a new test and teardown video. I got a new heat kit. Frequency counter. Model IM4100. I mean, it is in a very, very beautiful condition. And it works. <laughs> I also got the manual for it. This manual is from 1975. And it is in a very, very impressive condition. Some of the inlays are just like this. That will be schematics and uh, some fold outs and all that stuff. But as usual, heat kit manuals they are just insanely detailed about every little aspect of how it works how it's designed how to assemble this and how to assemble that um, this is a quite a product or a project for a beginner but the level of the manual is so Anybody with zero experience should be able to to assemble this if they follow the the instructions to the smallest detail. I mean, look at that. How do you do this and how do you do that? And wow, you never see this kind of detail. And the documentation is just amazing different colors of the switches and uh, <laughs> yeah I will most likely scan this and uh, publish uh, the manual here on uh, uh, on peel.dk so you will be able to find this uh, manual for free along with all the other heat kit manuals uh, we find so I will put the link in the in the video when I'm done with the with the manual, but meanwhile, let's uh, play a little bit with the frequency counter here. We are now in kilohertz mode, frequency mode, and this is yeah, of course, one kilohertz input. See if I go to period, our one millisecond of time. Is revealed here so let me go down in frequency to 500 Hertz 100 Hertz see so period is very good for slow that is 10 Hertz or even one bing so that is how many milliseconds you can count in this one second of uh, input. So it's just the other way around, right? The last mode is total. So that means it's never resetting the counting. So we'll just count whatever comes in. So this could be used for pulses that comes very, very rarely. So like 0 0.1 hertz. Or something like that right so if you if you don't know if it's coming or not or when is is it coming and and what not you could just set this up and come back a number of days later and then then you're probably going to uh, read your accounts or whatever kind of stuff like that so that is uh what i think a total count could be used for in in this uh unit and of course as you can see this takes way too long so i'll change it to uh, one hertz and uh, then we'll count up like this, one per second. Oh, yeah, there was uh, also a <clears throat> megahertz option for time base. And that will, of course, not affect the total time counting. So let's go to frequency mode. And, okay, one kilohertz of input is, of course, here, right? So... 10 kilohertz let's go to uh, 
100 kilohertz. So this is megahertz, so this is 0.1 megahertz, right? So 1 megahertz is right here. So how fast can this go? Well, 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 let's look in the manual. So in the manual under specifications, that will be page 47. Frequency up to 30 megahertz. Yeah. And it says minimum. Well, let's see if that is still a thing. How is that? working because if this is one megahertz right and if i put in nine megahertz I'm, I'm, i mean we're, we're running out of digits aren't we so what if i come with 10 ah, okay we're not running out of there was a leading zero that was haha -ha, i couldn't even see that through this uh, glass how cool is that okay so that is 10 20 30 ooh what okay and we maybe it's because we're running out of sensitivity so let's try and find this switch oh yeah okay 40 let's go to 41 and see if i can crank up the input level <laughs> not working but 40 megahertz. Uh, it's a little bit unstable here. Let's see if that is better. If I go to 30. Yes. Then it's completely stable. But there was definitely quite a lot of margin. That is impressive. I just love to take pictures like that when... <laughs> I don't know what is wrong with me here, but that is just the kind of fun that I have. But I'll, I mean, I did not touch the frequency alignment of this unit. So this reveals to me that the guy that made this or owned this before me uh, was very, very careful about the frequency alignment of this unit. And uh, by the way, uh, thank you very much, uh, Klaus, for sponsoring this beautiful unit. So, I am in the process of opening. But of course, let's have a little look on the rear panel. It runs also off an external 12 volt DC. And the fun thing is this input here goes after the mains on off switch so if you in if you use this to input uh your supply you can't turn the unit off so that is a little fun fact about how it's uh, implemented here so this is the oscillator selection internal or external adjustment for the oscillator frequency and here we got some bananas uh, for the oscillator so this can be input or output depending if you are running internal or external so it's all in the same uh, plug Ooh, we better be careful I will disconnect the line cord it says 25 watts that is of course not the case it is only 16 watts of power usage and that is the inside a really nice and big PCB here with all the goodies and just like I said with the power supply switch and the external voltage input let's look at the schematic this will explain exactly what I said this is the mains input it goes via this uh, on-off switch and it is also connected to the time-based division so that selects kilohertz or megahertz but this is the 12 volt external input diode for only input and then there is a 5 volt regulator everything here runs off 5 volt so that is why this unit is always on if you're running off external voltage. That will be the 5 volt regulator. 
mounted directly on the chassis so there's no isolation here as far as I can see right and also if you look here all ground is directly connected to to chassis which is also an okay way to do that crystal oscillator all the counters 7490 so that's 10 decade counters so it's dividing by 10 and that's of course the oscillator the NAND gates very normal way to do that everything here is so classic heat kith oh yeah about the main switch I I wasn't really um, a super impressed about having a mains switch and uh, frequency selection and all that kind of stuff in one switch but they actually solved this in quite a neat way look at that switch it is a very wide switch offering quite a lot of extra isolation distance to the mains and they also added a little isolation pad down to chassis so i mean it is quite all right but it's not within you know the latest standards of isolation distance obviously not but it is within acceptable kind of yeah it worked nobody got killed and it's quite all right and quite safe i have seen a lot worse i must say Oh, there was actually one thing I really wanted to show you guys. You've probably already seen it. Look at that. See the track? Isn't that just fantastic? So this is the supply voltage. It goes to a local decoupling capacitor. Uh, a tantalium. Like that. And, of course, there's an inductor down to another decoupling for all the frequency counting, latching, and all the good stuff. So, this will, of course, create um, current ripple on the supply voltage, of supply rail, right? And this is the input. So, here is the input. It goes to the attenuator. That's actually just two wires. Uh, I don't know if I can show you this. That'll be the two. We got some resistors and stuff here on that switch. And that will be the two connectors for the attenuator. I don't know if you are super impressed by the distance to chassis here. But this is of course a very low voltage. Just a few volts of uh, input. So... It doesn't really have to be super safe uh, isolation distances here. And then, here we go. This IC is actually uh, amplification and Smith trigger couplings. And of course this stuff must have a very, very clean DC voltage or at least don't pulse where it is passing. The, the trigger point of the amplification and Smith triggering and all kind of stuff like that, right? So that is why they added this track. So this is actually a high speed capable inductor isolating this system from that other system. So ripple and pulses here is not going that way and the other way. <laughs> and the fun thing is those tantalium cap capacitors they're actually good up to uh, quite a few megahertz and then they become inductive and uh, impedance will rise again. And But that is obviously not a problem in this part, but here they added another capacitor here for the higher speeds. So that is the, the only local capacitor to handle this entire circuit here. And there is a very funny smell in here. It smells like... I don't know, old dog or something like that. But 
That's just the way it is. Six thousand. But yeah, this is uh, pretty good manufacturing. Obviously, a homebrew. Somebody made all this and followed the manual to the last little detail. About following the manual when you're doing assembly here. The idea is you take off every little step along the way so you remember exactly where you are. Did you really do this? And that was obviously also done in this manual and I've been double checking all the different wiring and uh, color codes and everything here it's everything in this unit is completely perfectly done with all the correct colors and stuff like that so <laughs> that is just fantastic and I can also show you another fun little detail I find those comments here written in German because I think the guy that made this, well, I know the guy was German, because why would he write a little translation here? Isn't that cool? And I find this now and then in the, in the manual when there is something that is a little bit specially phrased, and then he looked it up and made sure that it was done correctly. I mean, pay attention to details. That is something I really love. So I don't think there's a lot more to, more to say about this uh, this uh, unit. I hope you had fun. And I really hope to see you again tomorrow. So far so good. Bye bye.